introduction of course and i will just before we begin uh, a quick sort of take on the theme this this morning um given everything that has happened in of course the past few years post covid we've seen this massive boom in content that's going across borders and that essentially is what we're going to talk about here with in representation from turkey of course and from india to massive entertainment markets across the world and before i begin getting into the thick of the conversation uh, ayushman i just want to ask you um, you know the, the three covid years that we had really changed the game it changed consumption habits patterns what we watched how we watched just look back at that time and tell me your experience not just as an actor as someone in the entertainment business but also as a consumer as a viewer how was that experience from for you oh my god i think this this really hastened everything uh entertainment industry content was ever evolving but the fa- the pace was hastened in these 3 years i think what we were supposed to achieve in next 10 years it happened in just 3 years and uh, of course initially there was like dearth of supply now there is like overwhelming supply so we're going through that curve right now uh, at the same time i guess we have pushed the boundaries of content uh, good is not good enough i think it should be great uh, heightened emotions uh, if if it's a small film it has to be a banger uh, and and i think it, this is this is the time where uh is the best time to be an artist and best time to be an indian as well at the same time so i i really believe in that so really expectations really changed in those years and i'm going to ask um hande also this exact same question um you know of course all countries experienced covid in their own ways but also in many ways it it was a experience that the world had together so tell me a little bit about how it changed you as an artist during that time as well as a viewer of content uh, thank you for asking but uh, i would like to speak with my own language uh, bence ben şunu ş- şöyle bakıyorum tam insanların düşündüğünün aksine belki de benim için covid dönemi çok e, aydınlanılmış bir dönem çünkü insanlar bu kadar tüketimin içinde bu kadar Ee, koşturmanın içinde aslında gerek olmadığını bir bir sene de olsa böyle bir kısa bir dönemde bile olsa aslında ne kadar çok az şeyle yetindiğimizi e, bize aslında yeten şeyin sevdiklerimizle bir arada olmamız olduğunu öğretti. Ben o yüzden bu dönemi çok güzel deneyimledim kendimce. Um, for me, for me on the contrary, I have realized that as humans we know how to maintain our lives with very little things instead of the extra things so for me this period of covid has been a period of enlightenment actually mm-hmm. well said was that a similar experience for you khushboo um okay a round of applause for that yaar unhone bola zyada the no samet ke kam kar diya thoda sa condensing the thought but kushbu tell me tell me how that experience was for you and i really want to sort of i'm asking each of you this because i really want to understand how that experience changed changed you not just as a person but as an artist as a stakeholder uh, what was it like hi everyone i think uh, <clears throat> post covid uh, the biggest change game changer was the content because content become the mass became the masters it wasn't about the star cast it wasn't about the actors it was more about what the audience wants and because of covid everybody was at home the world cinema was at fingertip mm-hmm. so they were able to look at different cinema the different kind of film making the different content world over the people were giving what we have always heard about it was available to everyone at their fingertip and i think that was the biggest change game changer where people wanted something similar you cannot today indian cinema you cannot give them any anything that is mediocre they want something which is absolutely the best whether it's content whether it's the making whether it's a sleekness or whether it's action or whether it's dance or music 
they just want the best so i think we have pushed ourselves to that extent where today we win grammys and we win the oscars so we have shown the world that india is not far and we are at par with them and the content where people are looking at content where we are talking about a film like drisham which is the rights have been brought by a japanese filmmaker to make that film in a japanese language so where we used to follow and say ke are yahan se thoda sa thought le liya wahan se thoda sa inspiration ho gaya and we are building a content and making indian cinema today indian cinema is being made into a foreign language is a huge leap for us and we say that yes we have arrived well said the huge leap and again uh, your point ayushman about india sort of arriving on the global stage of course again you know in those years we saw this massive boom in korean content turkish content even before that was on indian television as well of course streaming changed the game accelerated that pace as a representative of the indian uh, entertainment industry globally as well with your work in many parts of the world with global organizations including unicef um what is your what is from your vantage you know what is this sort of india thing that we bring to the global stage when it comes to entertainment as an artist when you make content or act in a certain film you don't have that agenda uh, or an aspiration to touch people globally Uh, when i was in uh, the time event in singapore i reiterated the fact that more uh, local you go more global is your reach so i think when you go rooted and touch the roots and give real stories uh, then the world is more interested in you uh, of course it has become a cultural melting point but something like elephant whisperers in the oscars or rrr or natu natu i think it's it's kind of exotic for them because is it still uh, exotic or uh, it is i think it's still exotic because the the, don't, the format don't tell me of song and snake charmers i think we're beyond no, that no elephant whisperers i'm talking about with gunith was yeah. part of yes. i'm talking about yeah. that uh, but still the the concept of song and dance of indian film industry is so unique and eclectic which you don't see anywhere else mm. uh, but turkish cinema for example i think it's it's again it's a cultural melting pot where it's it's eurasia it's not just uh only europe or only asia it's it's probably more progressive than middle east and more conservative and traditional than the west so it has a certain connect with indian masses mm -hmm. so it's very similar like that that's why it's become more popular in india that's a very interesting point you mentioned ayushman because uh, kushbu it's it's interesting because we are seeing this sort of uh people embracing their native and local cultures right like ayushman mentioned on uh, india you know it of course there are some stereotypes and all of that but we're really owning it we're really owning our culture and that's the similarity do you see that similarity even with say turkish culture and there and the sort of the entertainment the films the series that come out of that they really sort of own their culture and it's not about you know superimposing a, a global idea onto their markets onto their viewers but really taking their idea of it global your thoughts on that absolutely i think until unless we are not proud of our culture or where we come from our roots i don't think we can give them the best of anything so i think when the kind of films that are being made today or very recently there's a film which is released in malayalam called manjumal boys it was made in a very small budget of probably single digit on 8 to 9 crores but it is it's the fastest 100 crore club movie in malayalam and that is because it's rooted Uh, there's a telugu film called balagam which is a very very simple story about a grandfather dying and kawa ke wo pind ke din khana khayega ya nahi khayega but that film has made an enormous growth so you know the kind of impact we leave on the people it's always about what we are giving back where we come from it's fine to ape the west one concept which i'd never understand with the western horror films is you have a ghost in the house but bachcha akela soega kamre mein and that is something i'm like no i would keep my child with me but you know and this is the content what we give them and people take it up because and this is what i see even close by whether it is turkish or spanish films where we see that they are ready to own up the culture they are ready to own up where we come from we do not want to forego our roots and say that i am completely westernized yes it's fine to adapt something which is going to help us to grow but 
I think it's extremely important as a filmmaker, as a producer myself and a wife of a very well-known director, I think it's extremely important that we stay rooted and we give. And I, I think Ayushman has been the greatest example where he's given us films which is extremely rooted, whether it was your film, um, Article uh, 15, or whether it was, uh, you know, what you made in Chandigarh, uh, yeah, all, all that Chandigarh Karyashiki. Or when he comes back and does even a dream girl, or you do Andhadhun. I think, you, you know, you see where it comes from and you are ready. And it, that's the audience we have today. You are even the audience in this room, what I see. You are absolutely fine dancing with Nata 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 or you're absolutely fine doing Pushpa or and you're absolutely fine with Ayushman playing piano in Andhadhun. I think we all relate to, the, relate to that. And that is what it is important, that we stay connected to our roots, never let that go, because that is what makes, makes us different from the others. And if you want to succeed, you have to give them something different. The busy girl here. Explain And you know, but that's another thing, right? With so much sort of foreign language content, like you wouldn't even think a few, maybe even 10 years ago, that we would be watching so much foreign language content, right? And subtitling, of course, is a massive part of that and translating. Um, But let me get back to that point, uh, Hande, for you as well, about really owning your culture and, you know, what is true to, you know, your country and your people. Um, Again, there are so many similarities uh, between the cultures in, say, India and Turkey as well, which is, I guess, why, you know, there was such an uptake for Turkish content um, in India as well. So uh, tell me a little bit about, uh, you know, the idea of um, when in Turkey, for instance, when you look at your films and your series, uh, what are the global ambitions? It is one of the largest entertainment markets in the world, like India. Um, in terms of you know taking that content global, what is the what is what has been the agenda? Even for you as an actor, for that matter, right? What is your, what are your ambitions when it comes to seeing you know your your work in other markets? Aslında şöyle. Hem Hint sinemasında hem Türk sinemasında ben şuna çok e, şöyle bir ortak nokta olduğunu inanıyorum. Anlattığımız şey aynı, evrensel bir şeyden bahsediyoruz. Duygu, her yerde aynı duygu. E, kültür, hepimizin kültürü farklı olsa da e, bizim benzerliklerimiz aile yapımız, değerlerimiz, ahlakımız ve bunları anlatma şekillerimiz farklı. O yüzden e, aramızda böyle bir ortak nokta var. Ve tabii ki şöyle bir gerçek de var. Biz ülkemiz olarak yani kendi oyuncularımız, yapımcılarımız kendi değerlerimizi ifade ederken biz sinemayı, diziyi, filmi yani çok bunları kullanmayı çok seviyoruz. Çünkü kendimizi ifade ediş şeklimiz, belki içimizdeki çığlığı, içimizdeki ateşi filmlerimizle birçok inanılmaz değerli yönetmenlerimiz, inanılmaz değerli oyuncularımız var, yapımcılarımız var. Bu şekilde ifade edip tüm dünyaya kendimizi bu şekilde anlatmayı seviyoruz. Bunu tercih ediyoruz. Eminim ki Hint sinemasında da bu böyledir. Ve bu samimiyet, bu gerçek duyguları aktar, aktarmaya çalıştığımız için tüm dünyaya güzel şekilde yansıdığını düşünüyorum. I believe that what is common between Indian and Turkish cinema is the fact that we all try to convey the same feelings, whether that is in India or in Turkey, about family, about our lives. And uh, it may be different the way we do these things, the way we convey these feelings in our own films, but the matter is what we convey is absolutely the same. And uh, as actors uh, and actresses, both in Turkey and India, we have our own ways of doing it, but we absolutely share the same ethics same culture, same understanding with Indian people. Well said. Rooted again the point about (laughs) being rooted in very sort of real stories. Um, uh, Given that the theme of the day uh, at at Fiki Frames is essentially about skills and development of skills. uh, Now, of course, what we've seen over, again, post-COVID, post the pandemic, 
is an explosion of technology, whether it is on streaming or how we make our films or, or everything. Everything has changed pretty much, right? And I won't even get into Gen AI. But uh, Ayushman, tell me uh, for you as, as an artist and a uh, very active artist doing a whole bunch of things across genres, um, how have you seen technology play a role in changing you as an artist? Intrinsically, as a purist, uh, artists should be high on EQ rather than IQ. So we believe in emotions, we deal in emotions, we sell emotions. So it's a very unique profession we are in. Uh, but apart from that, where, as far as technology is concerned, I always believe that it enhances the visual experience. But it all emanates from the story and the screenplay. They're all other things are garnishing on the top. And of course, it, it, it'll, it goes hand in hand filmmaking and technology, we can't do without it. Um, but my core job as an artist is, is to emote and uh, bring out stories which are unique, which add certain value to people's lives. Uh, but having said that, uh, we have really gone leaps and bounds ahead in terms of technology, whether it's AI or, you know, uh, action seek editing skills, everything. I think, I think it's, it's a great collaboration with art and technology. Art and, I mean, so th there's no fear. And of course, we're seeing a lot of sort of, you know, fear around AI and especially creative jobs. You're seeing what AI can do. Um, maybe not from your, you know, are you worried about AI in the creative field? It's, it's a gray area. It's very gray. We don't have any laws related to AI. It's, it's too nascent a stage. And it's, I think we need to develop certain laws. Uh, but I really believe artists, as artists, you are, you are, you need to have that connect with people. I was, as I, as I mentioned, I was in Singapore for the time event. I, there was this seminar about the doctors. And doctors were like, for the allied jobs, AI is great. When, when you are approaching an AI-generated doctor, like as a patient, and you tell that AI-generated doctor, OK, I have not been drinking for seven days, and you're bluffing, that AI will not catch you. But the doctor will, because he'll understand the emotion. So I think that's, that's a great schism between human and technology, that you will never understand the fake emotion or the real emotion. The AI will only say, okay, jo bol rahe, main leta. <laughs> so yeah. Kushpu, your thoughts? I mean, not if, if not AI, if you don't want to comment on AI, that's fine. But you know, in, in general, how technology is changing, um, you know, the work of, uh, of artists, all stakeholders for that matter, in the industry. Um, where do you see it going? Is there more optimism? Is there perhaps uh, more fear? How do you see it playing out? I have always believed there are two sides of every coin. So when you want to own up the new technology, I think you really need to own up with a lot of responsibility because owning up something new comes with an extreme cautious uh, tech, um, responsibility. I mean, I echo my thoughts with Ayushman, where I feel that as an actor, until and unless I don't feel from my gut and emote, I will not be able to connect with the audience. Probably I belong to old school, where for me, even to read a book, I need to have that paper, uh, uh, you know, paper. I can't, I can't read on my, I mean, on my uh, iPad or anything. I mean, I don't carry an iPad. I don't have a laptop or an iPad. So I'm more of a paper. I need to feel that paper in my hand. I need to smell the book. I need to f the human brain picks up the negative side of the technology and misuses it. So we need to have a kind of a borderline where you need to say that this is where we need to draw a line. We cannot go beyond this. As, as, an, as a filmmaker, um, I would still say that for certain aspects, yes, the technology is fine. But I would still love to go back and say that I want my basic daily wage workers to be on the sets, my dancers dancing their heart out, my fighters fighting their, with all their guts and saying that, yes, we are making a film. I cannot even imagine a film industry where you have very robotic images or somebody saying, yeah, aap ghar mein baitho, ye hum create kar lenge. I am not that. I need to feel that. I need to feel that we all are there together, having a chat, working, and giving them real emotions. Because after all, it's all about emotion, whether it is like 
रिश्ते में हम तुम्हारा बाप लगते हैं और यू डू एनी थिंग एल्स आई मीन यू नीड टू फील दैट इमोशन अंटिल अनलेस यू डोंट डू इट आई डोंट थिंक यूल बी एबल टू कनेक्ट विद ऑडियंस ह्यूमन इंटेलिजेंस इज वॉट यू नीड Hande, same question to you. Uh, when it comes to technology, uh, you know, what is it like for artists in Turkey right now? Uh, you know, what are the conversations that you are having, perhaps, about new technologies like Gen AI, which have taken the world by storm? Um, what are some of the conversations you are having? What are some of the some of the positives that you are seeing? Some of the negatives that you see? Aslında şöyle ben e, yapay zekadan korkmuyorum. Yapay zekayı kullanacak olanlardan biraz korkuyorum. Çünkü tabii ki yapay zeka ya, teknoloji inanılmaz yerlere getiriyor e, sektörümüzü. Birçok bir alandaki sağlık sektörü her alanda. Ama e, ben daha çok kullanım şeklini, kötüye kullanım şeklinden çok korkuyorum. E, tekrar Covid'e döneceğim. Mesela biz Covid'de anladık ki... E, Bizim insana ihtiyacımız var. Sosyalleşmeye, beraber çalışmaya, omuz omuza olmaya ihtiyacımız var. Bu yapay zekalarla beraber belki de beni korkutan şeylerden biri artık e, birebir çalışmalar olmayacağı günler gelecek. Ama o zamanlar anladık ki bizim buna ihtiyacımız var. Eminim ki bu da çok kısa bir süreliğine olur ve insan tekrar doğasına döner, kendine döner, ihtiyaçlarına döner. E, bizim ülkemizde de teknolojinin Getir, e, getirdiği yerler, kullanıldığı yerler çok önemli. E, dizi sektörümüzde e, CGI'lar inanılmaz. Hani Tabii ki buna çok ihtiyacımız var ama oyuncu olarak, duygusal varlıklar olarak, insanlar olarak kesinlikle bir e, yapay zeka e, yapay zeka iş birliklerinde çok kendimi e, düşünemiyorum. For me, what I think about technology and AI in general is not the technology itself, but the people who will use it. There's unfortunately a possibility of abusing AI in film industry. And going back to uh, COVID actually, we have realized how much we need socializing, how much we need to be around people. So I do believe that technology may be active right now and it has helped the industry in Turkey as well for sure with CGI and everything. But I believe that soon we will understand again the importance of having the human touch because at the end of the day humans are emotional beings and we have to uh, touch our emotions in order to convey them. Uh, so I believe uh, in future uh, we will go back to the way it was. It's, it's so different having creative people on stage talking to me versus technologists because it's an entirely different conversation on, in, those, in those spheres. But I'm just going to pick on something that Hande said and Kushub, and I'll ask you this also. Uh, when it comes to the dark side of, the, of these new technologies and especially something like Gen AI, it seems uh, from what we've seen so far is that women perhaps face a bigger brunt of that especially with everything that we're seeing uh, with deep fakes for instance it's it's been it's been called a threat to democracy of course and we've seen the harm it can do um as a woman as a woman leader as a woman sort of leading in her fields um how do you feel about that what do you want to happen so that people are safe and people can practice their art their work whatever it is safely and securely That's exactly what I said uh, some time back. Ki most of them will be misusing this kind of a technology. And we have seen it in recent times when it comes to deep fake. Uh, and that is where I say the laws have to be very, very stringent. Yes, unfortunately, we have people who create these kind of uh, artificially generated uh, videos which involves women. But that's the mindset of most of the men around who are not able to understand or identify that whatever an actor or female actor does on screen it's her job um i definitely would want as a woman as a member of a uh, national commission of women i would definitely want very stringent laws to come in i definitely want people to be taken to task if any of these kind of technology is misused but i also would like to say that you know it's only the famous ones who are targeted 
because they know that's the only way those who create these kind of videos will be famous. So for them, it's a two-minute fame. They completely forget that how it's going to reflect not only on them, their future, but the future of their family. Because after all, they are caught. And once they are caught, it shames the family, not them alone. So, you know, it's just at the moment of heat, they want to do something and say, that, yeah, I created this, take the two-minute fame. <coughs> but yes, until unless we don't have very stringent laws about the use of the technology, what we are talking about, the future is going to be very, very fearful. And I, I dread thinking that if we don't bring in very stringent laws now, and say those who misuse this kind of a technology will be severely punished. I don't see a very, very happy frame in the future mm -hmm, with mm -hmm, this technology. Mm -hmm. It's certainly scary. Uh, Ayushman, I'll just maybe quickly, I have a few more questions, but I'll ask you, I'll ask you this, especially with a Women's Day approaching. And you are in many ways a feminist icon for a lot of people, given, given your work, of course, on screen, off screen, um, uh, just given, Again, you know, the fears, the opportunities, everything with technology and all the changes that we're seeing right now. What is your advice to, you know, young aspirants, uh, young people getting into the, getting into the industry business? Um, what advice would you give them sitting here right now? Just follow your heart. Of course, uh, hard work really pays off well. I've, I've I, I heard this somewhere that, um, you know, a focused fool has more chances of being successful than a distracted genius. So I think just be, it's, it, they are just old, old sayings, self-help books, but uh, it's But I'm so glad that Women's Day is approaching and men are in minority on stage. Which is very and, rare. Which is very, very rare. rare. And these kind of situations should happen more in more forums. Uh, we need more women speakers, opinion leaders, and every uh, man should be a little bit more than a woman. Life will be more beautiful. We couldn't have ended on a better note, so I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you so much for your time. It was lovely chatting with you. It was a true pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Aishman, sir.